Maybe. Hello, Red Wave. Welcome to the Red Blogs Podcast. Technical difficulties all around. I was muted, muting the song, but today we're getting to know Boise State for the big game on Saturday. And educating us today is Bob Beeler. Bob, thank you for joining the show. Can you tell all of us what exactly you do in Boise and how you know so much about this team? Well, for the past 15 years, this is my 16th season. I am the voice of the Broncos and uh, get a chance to call all the football games and basketball games and sometimes some other sports as well. So I've had a chance to uh, see the last 200 and I guess two football games because that's how many games I've done for Boise State. So just past my 200th a couple of weeks ago and uh, I, I've seen a lot of Boise State football. You've experienced some good Boise State football, too. Really man. good Boise State football. A lot of winning Boise State football. <laughs> now, will you be in Fresno this weekend? Absolutely. I'll be in the, the box, I'm guessing, somewhere next to Paul Leffler. And uh, I understand you guys are going to order us up temperature in the 70s, it sounds like, down there. H how do we get that for the first weekend in November? <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's been a strange weather year for us, an unusually wet spring. Um, you know, summer is always hot here in Fresno, and it's stayed mild here into November, which we, we are definitely not complaining. So yeah. I think well, our, I, our, our team generally plays better in the warmth. <laughs> yeah, and I, I personally, when I, when I see a California school ending up on the November part of the schedule, I'm always happy because, you know, I'd much rather go to Fresno, San Diego, or San Jose then go to Laramie or Logan in, in, in November, but we are going to have to go to Logan. So I guess you can't win them all. Now, Bob, what's the overall feeling like in Boise right now in the fan base? Mm -hmm. You've you're three and one in conference. You, you played a tough non-conference, played some good teams. What's the overall feeling uh, in Boise right now behind this team? I think the fans are disappointed. I mean, you know, for some, some schools, four and four would be, be a great record, but for Boise state, it's not the standard. So I, th I think people are a little disappointed. I think the team's disappointed with the fact that they're four and four and four on the season. I mean, you look at it, both Boise state and Fresno state have played five games each that have been decided by a touchdown or less. Fresno State has won four of them. Boise State has only won two of them. So, you know, if you, if you say a game within a touchdown could go either way, you know, if you if you give Fresno State four more losses, all of a sudden they're three and what, three and four or four and four themselves, I guess. And if Boise State were to win a couple that they lost. So there, there are a lot of games that can go either way in a season. Good teams usually find ways to win them. Boise State had its most complete game of the season last week against Wyoming, holding Wyoming to 112 yards total in the game. And I think maybe the most incredible statistic, Boise State fumbled a punt on their own 19. That was Fresno State's only touchdown. They ran a pass uh, for 19 yards that scored. They did not run another play the entire game on Boise State's side of the field. Wow. Not a snap. Not a snap. So that game was closer to being a shutout than for, than Wyoming scoring twice. So, you know, Boise State obviously thrilled with themselves. We'll see if they can uh, go two weeks in a row with the same kind of performance. And that's a Wyoming team that in the first half we struggled with. Mm -hmm. And I, I watched most of the highlights or condensed game today uh, with that Boise State-Wyoming game. And, yeah, your defense looked yeah. suffocating, to say it the did. least. You know, if they if they can play that well against anybody in the league, Boise State's going to have a chance to win every single game. I mean, they Wyoming was one for eleven on third downs. You know, so you don't need. You know, I mean, the offense has scored thirty points or more in I think six games in a row now, which is a good total. And you know, if you score thirty, you're probably going to win most games. But if you're only allowing seven, you don't have to find too many points to win the game. <laughs> <laughs> All so, right, so let's let's uh, swing this over to the offensive side of the ball. I know we, we have a couple questions there. I mean, starting off, most important position, quarterback. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what what's it been like with the two-quarterback system? I mean, do you give an edge to either quarterback playing more this game or that coaching staff's still got I, I, I think I think it depends on how things are going. I honestly think they, they substitute in and out based on the play or the formation or what they want. 
you have to be really on your toes when you're broadcasting because in the middle, you know, there may be two plays for green and then all of a sudden, you know, Madsen's in the game or vice versa. Now they haven't been on the field at the same time. So may, maybe that's something they're going to throw at Fresno this week, but I, I can say that, that four and 10 have not been on the field at the same time. But the thing that has impressed me, you would think that if you changed quarterbacks every two or three plays, you'd have some sort of a lot of false starts, maybe, or delay of game, you know, or, you know, just something, you know, where, where you wouldn't be able to get somebody in and something would happen. That has absolutely not been the case. I mean, it has been as seamless substituting quarterbacks as it would be if you substitute receiver and running back, which you do all the time. My question about the two quarterback system is usually you see different plays being called when there's two different style of QB pl being played. But I saw Madsen run a couple draw plays. I saw Taylor Green throw a pretty long ball for a touchdown. It, have you seen any difference in play style when no. either quarterback? No, yeah. no, and nor do I have a real feel for like when they might sub somebody in. So I would think that that that's a bonus if you're doing it because, you know, I, you know, and maybe maybe Coach Tedford or I'm trying to think who we play next, Coach Gonzalez at, at New Mexico, maybe they're more astute than I am and can crack the code of, you know, which quarterback's going to be in and what they're going to do on a given play. But and it's you know, you talk to the kids. You know, we had a couple of receivers today come to media and, you know, they're saying, you know, one of the guys Cobb said today, unless he sees them run on the field, a lot of times when he's out there ready for a pass, he doesn't even know who's in the game. <laughs> so it, it's worked. I mean, the offensive numbers are up and, and the one number that's up that kind of surprises me, the running numbers are up really more than the passing numbers are up. So, I, I mean, we had, we used two quarterbacks in 17, but. Cozart was more of a change of pace with Rippon because he ran it and was more of a runner. But, I mean, this one's basically been 50-50 as far as how they've split them up, where that one it was probably maybe 70-30 in favor of Rippon. So I've never covered a team that, that, that swapped quarterbacks where it goes in the middle of a drive, you know, and you end up with the plays. One game, one kid has more plays than another. You know, I, I think I think they're – I think they'll play to the hot hand. I think they'll if, – if, if Fresno does something or doesn't do something and they think they can take advantage with whatever plays one of them runs better, they might get more plays. But your guess is as good as mine is how, how they're substituting. I just know it's worked. <laughs> now, what about Jainty? We heard he's banged up a little bit. How is he looking – or have you heard of anything – we, they, they've been close lipped about everything. He did not play in the second half is all I can tell you last week. But uh, from Boise state's perspective, uh, George Halani came back, had played in the Washington game and uh, did not play uh, in any of the other games until the Wyoming game, 20 carries for 75 yards uh, in two of the last three games against Fresno state. Halani is best at a hundred yards. So, um, you know, we've had one good running back for sure. In every game, the freshman Dubar is playing, you know, better. He had his best game last week against Wyoming as well. So, you know, I, I guess we'll just have to wait and see whether, you know, whether Genty is in there or not against against Fresno State. I can tell you he's really good. George Talani is really good. Um, you know, Sherrod is really good as a running back. Um, do you miss Mims? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, it's not better to have two than one, right? Uh huh. That was that was going to be my exact point. I mean, what a what a luxury for a yeah. team to have, you know, multiple players that can per, you know perform at an excellent level. And I think the best unit this year for Boise State that they've gotten the most out of is offensive line, and they've used I want to say five, in the eight games five different starting line combinations. There has been somebody that's been out until last week. There's been somebody that's been out every week, but they've not done a nice job mixing and matching with seven different guys. And again, much like the quarterbacks, you wouldn't know who was in and who wasn't. I mean, they've given up eight sacks total in eight games, which I think is a good number. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the running has been outstanding. So, again, you know, it isn't like, you know, sometimes you look at a team that's won a lot of games and you'll say, you know, how many starting linemen have started every game? And you're like, oh, they have started the same line for the entire season. Well, you know, that, that usually is a recipe, you know, to win where, you know, if you're trying to mix and match in the offensive line, a lot of times that's been a trouble. But 
that's been good. I mean, the big, the biggest issue that Boise State has had is the defensive line and the secondary are a little bit young and a little bit inexperienced, and they really all put it together last week against Wyoming. So I think they're both groups that are um, coming on as the season's gone along. Uh, four guys, one in the defensive line and three in the secondary, all were in camps and or are on teams. So you lose four people off of a defense to the pros, basically, you're not going to be as good. Mm-hmm. You know, what are the names that we should be looking out for on the defensive side of the ball? We know a lot of offensive players on Boise. What about the defense? Well, I think one of the guys to watch for up front is number 91, Ahmed Hassanin. Uh, he comes from that collegiate hotbed of recruiting of Cairo, Egypt. Uh, he is the only uh, Egyptian that's playing college football in the United States. Great kid, great player. And you just watch somebody, his his half-brother was a high school coach in Southern California, and he wanted to play, so he came over, learned English, learned, um, learned football, because he kind of knew the rules, but not a lot. And you watch this guy. I mean, he, he's, you know, big, he's athletic, and you just realize that every week he is, you know, gaining more and more experience and I think he's had a sack in each of the last five games so he's a guy that that's coming along and then we've got a couple of linebackers that I think are really good Marco Notriani is a sophomore he's been the leading tackler I think five times this season he kind of got his way onto the field when DJ Schram who was a hundred plus tackler last year was hurt for a few games and then and then Andrew Simpson's our other linebacker he really has come along he's a playmaker he's a guy that has a nose for the football and also very good blitzing for sacks so um i th- i think that you know some of those guys are the guys that you want to pay attention to on the defensive side of the ball mm-hmm. now i got two quick questions for you Boise State is the winner on Sunday what did they do to become the winner well i think i think if Boise State wins that their defense was able to control a, a very good offense. I think I think you'll look and say that the defensive line was able to get in the backfield and and you know limit the time or limit the you know the, the throwing ability of Keen. I think if if Keen, you know, sits back and has a lot of time and looks downfield, I I think, you know, Fresno's, you know, I mean I, I mean it's really not rocket science. If if I keep my quarterback up and not let you get in my face. I'm going to have a pretty good chance to do what I want to do on offense. And conversely, if my defensive line is in there forcing your guy to, you know, scramble out and, you know, not sad or do whatever, you know, benefits me. So, but I, I think that it starts up front. If, if, if Boise State's defensive line is able to do something, I, I think that'll be key. I, I was going to ask you the vice versa of that question, but it's, mm-hmm. you answered it for me. It sounds like. Mm-hmm. If King's got time, that means Fresno is the winner on. on yeah, Sunday. I mean, I, and I think I mean. the same thing for you know e- either quarterback. Um, uh, you know, and and watch this be a game where you know Sherrod and 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 our running backs run wild and nobody completes any pass. <laughs> I mean, it's you know it's possible. I, I would think it probably won't go that way. You know, I mean, I think they'll the, the running. Don't get me wrong, the running backs will do well, but I think sometimes the running backs are a little more consistent. That you know, if you if you block and you you know, you can get, I'm not saying you get 200 yards in the game, but you know, you'd like to think that, that if, if you were going to hand the ball to Sherrod, you're going to hand the ball to Genty or Halani that, you know, those guys should do enough to get four or five yards of carry by the time the game's over. So I think it's a little more consistent what you see out of the running game. Yeah. I think the, the way that I'm seeing this game is, you know, I think Fresno state needs to make the quarterback win the game. And if, you know, whoever is, at tailback for Boise, if they are doing what you said, getting five yards a clip, I think that that's going to be a, a path for a Boise victory. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there have been just some great games, I mean, between the two. And, I mean, we've played many years. We've played twice. So, you know, I don't know if the math this year, because whoever loses this game is going to have a second conference loss. The fact that Air Force is sitting with zero. Um, you know, one of the things that that, that it's different this year, that the top two go, it's not like an East winner you know, in a West winter, actually a mountain winter and, and a West winter. But I would think that, you know, Air Force, we still have to face them. You guys don't draw them this year. So that that's a, a luxury, a break that, you know, it appears the way they've been playing that, you know, they're one of the best teams in the league. We didn't draw UNLV. You guys did. And, and obviously this is a year where UNLV is up. So, um, uh, you know, when you play not everybody in the division, sometimes the luck of the draw on the schedule makes a difference too yeah it's huge uh kill do you have anything else for bob 
I mean, what, one last question. You know, th- this is going to be a sold-out game at uh, mm-hmm. former Bulldog Stadium. So do, do you have any gauge of, you know, what the Boise contingent is going to be in the stadium? You know, is this going to be a well-traveled uh, fan base or, you know, maybe not so much this year? We have a good turnout of, you know, families and, and alums that live in California. So I would think that, you know, they'll they'll be a decent number. There's always more every game than you think. You know, because and I'm sure maybe it's the same thing with Fresno. You'll look and you're playing, I don't know, Troy in Alabama, and you're like, who in the heck's gonna be at Troy? And then you look over there and there's always, you know, a handful of people in blue, not in the, the section that they give the visiting team, but just you know, in some random section, you're like, Who are these people, you know, that are there? And and I think a lot of schools do that. I mean, when we go on the road, there, there's always more than you think that would be there. And, you know, maybe if the game is sold out, you know, may, may, maybe it'll be a little harder to get tickets. But Boise State travels pretty well. Um, so I, I would expect a decent – I don't know what that number would be, but I think it'll be a, a decent turnout. The one thing in this game, you can usually tell who people are for because most of your <laughs> folks are going to wear red. Most of our folks are going to wear blue. So as you, you know, as you pan the stadium – kind of obvious who somebody is for i guess maybe the random person might be wearing like green or something that's just at the game and you wonder okay what side are you on but um yeah i i I think that it's going to be a great atmosphere i'd much rather and i and i think talking to players much rather have a game with the crowd full and thrilled than go to some place in the places you know three quarters empty there's no energy you know, it's just not as fun. I mean, you love to have a crowd that, that that cheers everything you do and, you know, they can probably help you. But I, I would rather have my second choice would be a, a packed house for the other team. And my third choice would be nobody. I mean, because it's just not fun. It's not fun. I mean, I, I think it's fun to, you know, to, to see all the pomp and circumstance and, you know, two of the best teams in the league. I mean, regularly speaking, you know, we've played, what, four times against each other in the championship. We've been there two other times. I think you guys have been there at least, what, once, maybe twice, not against us? Yeah. Yeah, it was a 12 or 13 was uh, it's Utah, State, Utah State, right? State. Yeah. Yeah, and then was there another time you play anybody else, or is that it? But still, that's that's six times for us and five times for you. I mean, you look at the other number of times that are going to the championship, it, you know, and, and the other ones are way lower down the down the down the pecking order. Yeah, the winner of this game is usually there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, you know, I and I think with the top two, I think whoever wins this game, you know, if they play their cards right in the last three, you know, probably would have a good chance to to be one of those teams in the championship game. Mm-hmm. Last thing for me, Bob, and then we'll let you get out of here. Is you've been covering Boise football for a oh, shoot basketball too and you guys have a very good have had a very good basketball team the past couple of years uh but following this football team and watching this rivalry grow between the bulldogs and the broncos what has that been like it's been a lot of fun i mean you know you just I, i'd rather play good teams and 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 see games that are you know worth seeing that are you know my job is a lot easier if the game is close so obviously i want to see boise state win and, and you know and hope they get it done but you know, I, I'm disappointed, guys. We don't play every year, and I think that's one of the problems when you get leagues that are too big. You know, you where you have to miss teams. I, I think that now that you're having leagues with 12 and 14 and 16, and who knows, they're even talking about maybe you know someday we're going to see 20 team leagues. Well, if you're only going to play 12 games in the regular season and you're going to play three or four non-conference, you're going to miss three or four teams a year in the league. So. I think it's too bad. I think sometimes I think some things are missed with the with a bigger league than you'd get out of a smaller league. Hundred percent. I totally agree. Uh you want to finish up with anything, Caleb? No, I think we covered it. Bob, we appreciate you uh, making some time for us and uh, you know, safe travels uh, here in the next day or so coming down to town. And um yeah, wish you a good call on the game. Thank you, guys. Look forward to it. I'm glad you've delivered some good weather. We'll, we'll uh, thoroughly enjoy being out there and wearing, you know, just like a maybe a little windbreaker at the end of the game, and that's it. <laughs> it should be fun. Thank you very much, Bob. We appreciate it. Uh, j- you can hop on out whenever you want. We have to read some ads. 
So, and I don't want to, <laughs> if you don't want to listen to him, you, you feel free to just hop on out and we're going to do some of that. But Bob, thank you very much. And uh, best of luck uh, this weekend and uh, safe travels. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> All right. Like we said, if you are interested in finding uh, Bob, that is Bob Beeler. He's on uh, some social media places. You could find him. He covers Boise State. Bob, once again, thank you very much for uh, educating us on Fres on Boise State football. Caleb, okay, we're going to get to our preview in a sec. But before that, we got to thank all our sponsors. Eastie's Wood Shop. You need to check out shopew.store for your custom woodworking and home decor needs. Look, Thanksgiving's coming up. Christmas is coming up. They have very cool things that they do cu custom stuff. And you can go to shopew.store to send them a message and for their line of personalized gifts this holiday season. And you can let them know exactly what you want. And they can bring that to life. Use code BEWARE for 15% off your first purchase. That's BEWARE for 15% off at shopew.store. Also... Givoli Winery, located on Biola Avenue, just north of Shaw, open Saturdays and Sundays, noon to five, and by appointment only on weekdays. There is an event Saturday morning, starting at 12.30, where Bulldogs will be there doing a tailgate. Um, you, there will be more info about that on the preview, uh, but the, the rec department is throwing a an event there and has invited Blair Bulldogs, so we will be there, and you guys can come. It's a free event. Uh, Pizza and wine for purchase. That's Givoli Winery located on Biola, just north of Shaw. Caleb, what else you got for us? Well, we also need to thank Manage X, uh, another great supporter of us. They're a full service property management company in Fresno and Clovis. They service single family homes, uh, small multifamily complexes, office, and industrial properties. Uh, they've been in business since 1978, and they're big supporters of Fresno State and uh, Beware Bulldogs. So uh, if you are needing property management services, you can check out their website managex.net and um, yeah we appreciate their uh, support and we also uh, appreciate Flora Flower Cart a local flower shop that's modern and unique um, Caleb has mentioned it before you know it is now the season of buying gifts and Flora Flower Cart is a great great place to go for that they support local growers uh, flowers and um, they're open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m., 6 p.m. on Shepherd and Willow in Clovis. Um, you can also order online or come pick up in person. They have a florist there that can help you create something. And they also have subscriptions available. So if you don't know what to get the, someone special in your life, buy them a subscription. Um, use the code FRESNO15 for 15% off. That works online and in store. Thank you, Flora Flower Cart for or Flower Company for your support of Beware Bulldogs. And there, I got one more, but st stick around because I have a stat for you guys, and we're going to talk about it in the preview too. But big thanks to the Vine Church in Fresno on Shaw, just west of Grantland. The Vine Church is a place where if you're looking for support or to strengthen your community and to get to know Jesus, come on out. Uh, the pastor speaks biblical truth there. The community there is kind and welcoming. We meet Sundays at 10 a.m., on uh, Shaw, just west of Grant Grantland. That's the Vine Church. Come on out and let me know if you're going to be there because I will be there. The stat, so thank you to all our sponsors. Thank you. We got to make sure we shout them out every episode. The stat I want you guys to know, and we're going to be keeping track from here on out, is, uh, as, is a stat basically I'm going to, about for us. Like We got to hold ourselves accountable, the fans. And we heard Tedford, and if you listen to the presser, talk about we he wants everyone loud first, second, and third down all the time. Don't be loud, except for when we're on offense. Whenever they're on defense, please be loud. And so I I uh, asked some friends of ours and found out that do you know how about false starts, Caleb, at Valley Children's Stadium for the other team? Do you know how many false starts the other team has committed in Valley Children's Stadium? This season, not many. I mean, definitely you can count them on one hand would be my guess. You can count them on one hand. It's four. Wow. Only four false starts on the opposing team in Valley Children's Stadium. That's not good enough for us. So we talk about the team and hark on them doing their job. It's now our job to be really loud on defense. We can cause delay. I should find out delay of games next. 
delay of games, and false starts only four. And by the way, three of the four were Kent State. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, make sure you tell everyone around you to scream and yell on first, second, and third down when we are on defense, and maybe fourth down. And chant block that kick. Whatever you can do, make sure that you, whatever loudest noise you can make, do it, please. Uh, we need to boost those numbers. So big thank you to Bob. Huge game Saturday. We are going to get to our uh, preview. So if you haven't listened to that yet, go check that one out. Caleb, thank you. I will talk to you in a sec. We're going to go through our preview. Uh, stay safe, everybody. Stay healthy. God bless you guys. And as always, go dogs. Go dogs.